And if law enforcement finds uh, somebody who is uh, responsible for that, uh, you know, rest assured, we would prosecute that. Tears, terror, trauma, panic, just a few of the many emotions felt by students, teachers, and police as 911 calls came in of an active shooter. In all, we're being told as many as 13 calls went out this morning on a variety of schools across the state. Yeah, new special Stan Rascone joined us from Spanish Fork High School right now, one of those schools that went into lockdown today. And Dan, an emotional scene playing out this morning. Yeah, a lot of tears and emotion out here at Spanish Fork High School as students and parents reunited after it was all over. One student telling me she was in a bathroom, locked with several other students, huddled, crying and fearing for their lives. Now, according to these 911 calls, apparently they are saying there's an active shooter inside the school and students are down. Cops are running everywhere. It was intense. Dozens of officers racing to schools across the state as numerous 911 calls go out of an active shooter just before 10 o'clock in the morning. One of our administrators called me and said, Lana, we have word that there's um, students down inside the building. From Spanish Fort to Ogden. That caller reported that there were shots fired and several students were down and injured by gunfire. And even a call about West High School, which was on spring break. We uh, received information of a possible active shooter here at West High. At Spanish Fork High School, worried parents met students at the football field. By this time, word had spread that it was all a hoax, but the trauma and emotion was still very fresh of what everyone experienced. Yeah, it was very, very, very scary. As armed officers and rifles drawn roamed the hallways, looking and searching for an active shooter. And he said, there's an active shooter at your school. Wherever you are, lock the door and get low. Turn off your phones. And so we were all just like, all of us start crying. We were like, this isn't real. It's pretty traumatic. You never know how you're going to react until you react. And a lot of shaking, a lot of upset. And then when we got the all call that said, we have cleared all areas and there are no victims. There's no tragedy. What a sigh of relief, but the best outcome of all, for sure. The question now, who could have done such a horrific thing? How sad I am that there's individuals in this world that would purport a hoax like this on our high school students. Whoever is responsible, I wish they'd stop because it's not funny. It's not a joke. Like, they're taking this seriously and you're scaring everybody and everybody's panicking. Yeah, a lot of panic out there right now. Of course, federal authorities, local authorities, all looking into this to try to figure out who exactly did do this. Trauma counselors expected to be at many of these schools tomorrow to help students get back to normal. Mike, back to you. Yeah, no excuse. It's beyond maddening. Dan, thank yeah. you. And these hoax reports, yeah. as mentioned, they're no laughing matter. Anyone calling in fake threats can face some serious criminal charges. We sat down with Salt Lake County District Attorney Sim Gill on what could happen if police track down the person calling in those fake threats. Well, other than just being, I think, uh, unethical and immoral, and, uh, and uh, there are uh, violations. If you call somebody uh, and use the emergency services and talk about an imminent uh, uh, injury or harm at a specified location, it's a third-degree felony. Uh, if, as the result of you making that uh, emergency disclosure, somebody gets hurt in that process, it's also a third-degree felony. Yeah, you heard that correctly. A hoaxer can be charged with a third-degree felony for making a fake threat. Here in Utah, if convicted, each charge would carry a prison sentence of up to five years, along with a $5,000 fine.